Each year, over 750 million gallons of wine are produced in the United States. 90% of them come right here from California. The earliest documented fermented beverage made from grapes did not come from the Romans, but actually from the Chinese 9,000 years ago. And right here in Napa Valley, each acre produces 1,200 bottles of wine. There's a lot of science that goes into making this stuff. We're here at Bee Cellars Vineyard to figure out that whole process from start to finish. The practice of growing vines for wine is viticulture. Vitis is Latin for vine, but there are three very particular scientific bits to viticulture. The acidity level of the soil is crucial for viticulture because it affects the nutrients needed for the vine to grow. The mountains, valleys, and rivers in an area determine its topography, and that determines sunlight and water supply for the vines. Ideally, a grapevine is going to get 25 to 35 inches of water every year for the best grapes. The climate determines which grapes are best grown for that area. However, the majority of grapes grown in the world for wine are in the temperate climates, between 30 and 50 degrees, both north and south of the equator, and are grown in temperatures between 50 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like 72 right now. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right? Taken all together, the soil, climate, and topography of winemaking creates the wine's terroir. All grapes in Napa Valley are hand-picked, and then they used to be hand-sorted and de-stemmed as well. Until this year. Until they got an optical sorter. They're good. The optical sorter reads the organic composition of each berry by taking a microsecond photo. The machine can then seek out imperfect berries as they emit a dissimilar light wavelength. The sorter blows a strong puff of air on the flawed berry, knocking it into a separate hopper, leaving only perfect berries to be crushed. This is super cool! And super rare. Only 9 out of 500 plus wineries have one because it's so expensive. You break your buy. After the grapes are sorted, they're de-stemmed and brought here to be crushed. But since we're in Napa Valley, the grapes are only crushed by themselves, by gravity. The resulting mixture is called must. The red must goes right into the fermentation tanks, but the white must goes into a presser to remove the skins and leave only the tasty juices. Then it gets fermented. These are the giant fermentation tanks where the must turns into wine over time. This one is 1,750 gallons, which makes 5,000 bottles of wine. Fermentation is crucial for turning must into wine, and here's how it works. As glycolysis occurs, it produces adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and two three-carbon sugars called pyruvates. The ATP provides energy to the yeast, allowing it to multiply and continue fermentation. The yeast takes the pyruvates and transforms them into carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is the alcohol content in wine. Yum. After the fermentation stage, red wines are sent to a press where all skins are removed. The white wine is allowed to settle. Then, yeast is removed from both of them. Once the yeast is out of the picture, the wine gets put into these barrels. Some are stainless steel and some are oak. They're aged in those barrels for up to 20 years. Wine is super unique in the fact that it gets better with age, unlike your leftover pizza. And we can attribute this to two chemicals, tannins and esters. Esters are a byproduct of the acid in the wine reacting with the alcohol. The acidity is determined by the amount of hydrogen. On the other hand, tannins are a C6H5OH molecule. It's an organic polyphenol. Tannins are the reason why wine needs to be aged. A newly made wine has plenty of tannins. However, it's the tannins that bind to a protein in your saliva that makes your saliva slippery. So, the more that a wine is aged, the less tannins, the less dry mouth. To avoid that dryness, the wine is aged over time, so it can go through the process of glycosylation, which is when those polyphenols bond with the sugars in the wine so they don't have to bond with the proteins in your saliva. Wine can be aged too long. The majority of wines are aged between 4 and 10 years. However, if they're aged past that, the esters tend to break down back into their original reactants, and then it tastes like not very good. Not so good at all. Gross. So that is how wine is made. Thank you for watching and huge shout out, special thank you to Trace at D News. You can check out some of his videos right here. Check out other Nick Pia's right here. And a huge special thanks to B Sellers and Christina B Sellers.
for letting us shoot here. It was amazing. If you guys are ever in Napa, come to Be Sellers. There is a link in the description below. Click that and we will see you next Wednesday. Let's go drink some wine. Okay. Yeah. Mmm, this looks tasty.